Hello and welcome to a very special episode. Today we are in conversation with actor turned beauty entrepreneur Katrina Kaif. Katrina, thank you for your time. Thank you. So let's go back in time. How did the conversation begin with Naika about your line? Well, I remember the exact conversation. It was at my house and Falguni Nair and Veena, um, the CEOs of um, Naika, had come home with my uh, manager Vivek Kamath. And there was this kind of just very frank and open conversation just between women on what we felt about beauty, what we felt about women, what was our take on what we wanted to see happen in the beauty industry, and what we felt about makeup. And it was just like three, four girls chatting, plus a guy <laughs> who was uh, not seen so much. But just, just it was such an incredibly easy, flowing conversation. and. Very rarely do I have such a, a good synergy with, with somebody who I've just met. Normally it takes me a while to understand them and to open up to them. But there was just an, an instant liking to, to Falguni and her, um, her approach towards decision making, her approach towards beauty. Um, she just seemed so, um, so excited about what was happening in the beauty industry right now. I think in, in, in across the country, I think we're really seeing the market open up hugely. We're seeing kind of makeup, uh, people become a lot more educated about makeup and a lot more familiar with makeup. And um, when we kind of discussed that um, my contract with the existing um, beauty brand, which I was endorsing, it was over. And um, we kind of just thought that, you know, let's do this line and let's create this line together, which says and which does exactly what we want to do with makeup and about makeup. And to be able to have that opportunity and to be able to have that experience of creating exactly what I wanted my makeup to do and to be able to say and talk about beauty exactly what I felt about it through the years with my experience now as an actor, as a model, as, a, as in front of the camera for so many years, that opportunity to me was something which was extremely exciting. Uh, now, there are so many beauty products out there in the market. According to you, what differentiates K? So for us, the most important thing, and for me especially as somebody who a lot of people don't know, but over the, over the years that I've been um, you know, in front of the camera, I've done my makeup, my own makeup for a lot of those years and for a lot of those movies or events. And I'm very, very familiar doing my own makeup. So when someone shows me a product, it takes me exactly 10 seconds to tell you what I do like or don't like about the product and why I feel it's good or why I feel it's not good. So for me, I knew exactly the textures, the consistency and the performance that I wanted out of K-Beauty. The performance is obviously comfortable and long lasting. Comfortable when I say that because I don't want makeup to ever feel heavy on your skin. I don't want you to feel like I've got something. I want you to feel like, forget it's there. Long lasting because we all want our, our makeup to not smudge, not move, be long lasting and work as hard as we do. And what I wanted out of the consistencies is it's got to feel comforting. Um, I don't know if that um, if that makes sense to you, but uh, all of our all of our products have got actual ingredients in which care for your skin. So whether it's chamomile or different oils, which will actually so when you're wearing the lip crayon, your lips feel hydrated. They feel soft. Some colors can dry out your lips. I don't know if you've ever experienced that, where after a while your lips start getting a bit dry. But we really didn't want that to be the way. We wanted, once you put the crayon on, your lips kind of feel almost nourished along with the color. So that was the two most important things to me, that the performance was high and that the quality was incredible of the makeup. And that was something we went to every length to not compromise on and make sure we have the absolute best quality in our product and that it cares for your skin at the same time. And is K-Beauty sold in India or is it sold internationally as well? So right now it's only sold in India. Nika um, online and Nika stores are all across India of course and I mean I think Falguni is such an uh, amazing entrepreneur and she's such a person of, of incredible vision and we constantly chat about it and we're like you know I think it would be really exciting to, to look at the possibilities of taking K-Beauty internationally because um, there is an incredible market of makeup lovers and a woman who love makeup as much as we do. And, um, and they're also familiar with our movies, you know? So there, there is a bit of, a, of a, an already familiarity with you through the films that I've done. 
Uh, now you spoke about doing your own makeup, you being very familiar with makeup and what is required. Uh, keeping in mind the fact that you've aced the no makeup look, uh, what are the key products that you kind of made sure uh, the collection has? So um, what we are doing is we're introducing every two weeks, every three weeks, a new product until our whole range is obviously is, is going to be ready and unveiled to everyone. And with each product that we're introducing, you're getting that education and you're getting that, that, um, those videos, those tutorials to understand about the product so that you can really see, okay, does this work for me? Is this what I want? Is this what I want out of my product? So we're not just expecting the, the, you know, um, the consumer. We're not just expecting women to take our word for it, so to speak. We're actually putting a lot of information about the product in videos and pictures and descriptions through the amazing bloggers that are there who have been, you know, so incredibly supportive of K-Beauty. And um, with each product, we are letting everyone get a chance to get familiar with it. And then we are intro introducing a new product. Okay. So hopefully within a few months, fingers crossed, um, everything will be you know, the entire range of K-Beauty will be out there in the market and everything you need to do an entire makeup look from foundation to concealer to powder to mascara to lips to lip gloss, everything will be there. And I think that's when the real fun is uh, really going to begin because then you can do these incredibly fun, um, you know, whole makeup looks and you can do so many things once you have that entire range. All right. Uh, now, you've supported your mother's uh, NGO in Tamil Nadu all these years, and now I believe there's a CSR arm to K-Beauty yes. as well. Take us through that. So that's called CARE, and CARE is spelled with a K. So K has got a very um, special connection to K-Beauty. Obviously, um, we wanted something that had a, had a connection to my name, Katrina, but yet I somehow was never entirely happy with just putting my name on, on the makeup brand and when, when we heard K, I think everyone just kind of had that moment where it felt right and it seemed right. And there's, there's a lot of, it's also kind of naturally organically fit in many of the things which we wanted to do. So CARE, which is K-A-R-E, is, is exactly what you said. It's the CSR you know, arm which we kind of are launching today. We're introducing it today, between today and tomorrow. And what we really want to do and what really excites me about this is that we are going to not be partnering with just one initiative. We're going to be partnering with many different initiatives. And what that does, I feel, is it gives people and it gives us also the opportunity to see the different, you know, because you, you do get approached by a lot of people to help garner awareness for their cause or for whatever they're doing. And what it gives you a chance to do is to actually have a platform to speak about that and to support that. And that's what I think K Beauty and Care is giving me is like a proper platform to actually speak about the causes which connect to me. Because it has to connect to you. I think what, what's really important to me when you're doing anything which is about helping um, a cause which is an initiative someone else has launched or something someone else has created is it's very important that you have a personal connection to it and it means something to you. Okay. Uh, now, OK to be you is a tagline of K-Beauty. Uh, who came up with it and uh, is there any personal anecdote <laughs> that it came oh, from? Oh yes, there's a, there's a very good anecdote about that. So I was in Zoya Akhtar's house and we were discussing um, the whole script and we were discussing what we wanted to do with the first video about K-Beauty, which was really about the whole, the whole ethos of K-Beauty. It wasn't about showing the product. You don't see any of the products in the K-Beauty you know, ad film, uh, that I call it. It just talks about what I wanted to say about beauty and what I wanted to say about women in a fun way, in a non-serious, light way, but that it still meant something to me. And when Zoya was writing the script and when she was discussing with me and when you're discussing what you wanted to say, it was actually her and, and her DOP who was, um, who was there in the house and they were discussing that what does Kay feel and what do you think of? And then we were talking about what we were trying to say with the film was that Whoever you are, there is no definition of beauty. There is no ideal of beauty. And I really don't believe that. It's not, it's not something which I'm saying today. I've, I've really, really never felt that. I think we, we, let's just look, if we look across the different cities, there's so many different types of beauty. You know, you can have someone who has an angular face. You have someone who has a beautiful round face. You have someone who's thinner. You have someone who's a plus size woman. There's so many different types of beauty. And every time I look at a face which strikes me, it's always for a different reason. 
there's never a, a similar line that I say, okay, she's, she's nice, she's nice. She, there's always something unique about that person which draws you in. And that's what we wanted to say with, with K-Beauty's ad film is that it's exactly that. It's perfectly okay to be you, however you are, because that's what's going to make you beautiful. But taking cue from that, uh, for some people, it's very difficult to embrace who they are. So what advice do you have for oh, them? Oh, but see, that's, that's the thing is, it is difficult to embrace who you are, but it's difficult for me as well to embrace who I am. A lot of times I feel people perhaps look at, look at uh, sometimes those who are in the public eye or those whose lives seem to be very glamorous and assume that, oh, these people are absolutely fine. They have no problems. Or they, but it's not, it's not actually like that because I think no matter who you are, and definitely for me, it's you face the same insecurities. You wake up on days feeling not good about yourself. You wake up feeling underconfident. You wake up having all of those issues. And that's why that, that line applies for me too. It's also very important and it's a constant reminder for me as well to accept yourself as you are and not be too hard on yourself. Okay, uh, talking again about embracing oneself, there's so many people who now, I mean, there's a whole industry internationally and nationally which is based on laser, Botox, fillers, uh, plastic surgery. What are your views on that? Should one tinker the way one is or one should not? You know, I think that that's something which is such a personal choice and that's not something which I believe anyone really has the right to comment on because what do you feel comfortable doing? You know, what do you feel happy? You live with yourself. We have one life and we have one body that we know of and I just feel you should take care of it the best that you can. I mean, every morning that I wake up and I'm like, I think I want to sleep for three more hours instead of going to the gym, I remind myself that, you know, we have one body and it's in our own hands. That's the beauty of it. It's in our hands, most of the time, how we take care of it. When, we're, when there's a pizza in front of you or there's a, you know, big junk food and, or then, and you have the option of eating something simple, just as simple as, you know, anything, whatever it is, that you know that it's healthy. It's not about eating fancily, it's about eating healthily. And my mom is the biggest example of that. My mom lives in Madurai, which is a tiny village. Sometimes they only have four or five hours of electricity in the day, but her diet is perfect. You d it does not mean you need to be fancy. She just does not have refined sugar. She doesn't have dairy. And, uh, and you, you cook simply and eat healthily. And that's, that's honestly the best way to have longevity. Good diet, good exercise, and, and living sensibly, not overdoing things. We have this whole section which is going to be dedicated to advice from you. So oh, no. We'll leave it to that. But uh, uh, in some of your interviews, you also spoke about producing films. Mm. Is that something uh, which is in the pipeline? Oh, definitely. You know, it's just that there's... There's been a few things which came up together, which is exciting, but it's also that there's just a lot to do. So um, there is actually a lot of a lot of development in that area. There's a few to a few stories and a few topics which I'm really excited about, which are kind of in the process of being written. Some are already written, and it's it's all there and it's coming together. You know, so when the time is right, hopefully I will be announcing that as well. And um, that's also something which was a few years in in the making and a few years in, in process and let's see I think everything comes when the time is right and that that will also finally come together I, I believe at the right time. Uh, internationally there's so many celebrities who have become entrepreneurs. That's right. Uh, whether it's Kim Kardashian, whether it's Gwyneth Paltrow, whose business model excites you or whose journey are you fascinated by? So you know one of the, the uh, um, original or one of the initial um, kind of uh, beauty uh, endeavors that came from an actor which I instantly loved was Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop. I mean that was something which I loved because you know what it felt like to me? It's information that we all like and we all know and she's just sharing it with you. She's just sharing it with you and that's, that's what I actually really, that's one thing that I really want to imbibe into K-Beauty and I want people to feel like K-Beauty is a community that we're just sharing tips and information and beauty information with each other. And that, that's, that's kind of one model which I, I do really, I really love. I also think um, that Victoria Beckham is also doing some really interesting things. You know, her clothing line is fantastic. Um, her makeup line is, is just launched now and I, I can't wait to see it. I've not seen it because I've not traveled yet, um, but I, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Uh, Katrina, the actor to Katrina, the businesswoman, what kind of brought about the change? I mean, 
it's not a it's not a change per se it's just another another part of my of my of of the work that I do you know like there's different there's different dimensions and different different aspects to the work that I do and this is just another part of the work that I do which came about very um, it came about very naturally I think I there, I'd reached the place where I had so much information and experience of working with the best makeup artists that there are and so mu so much I'd learned from them so much I'd learned myself about makeup and I wanted to share that with people and I wanted to share that with women uh, everybody asks you so do we have to what is your fitness routine <laughs> so my um my fitness routine actually varies. It varies and it, uh, according to what it is that I'm trying to achieve at that particular time. So if it's an action film, then I, I, I tend to do a lot more functional, you know, which is your, your lunges, your squats, your push-ups, your, you know, your kind of full body weight exercises. And when I'm in between um, maybe a specifically, you know, uh, fit target that I'm trying to look like for an action film then I do a lot of nourishing kind of exercise like Pilates like yoga um, and that's that's the great thing that I a great partnership I have with my trainer Yasmin Karachiwala is that um, it's not about today or tomorrow it's about keeping yourself fit for a long period of time and it's about sustaining that so just because you can it's not required for you to go and hit the gym and and you know push your body and put to the limit all the time it's good to also space it out and give your body those periods of rest and recovery but I mean if I have to kind of generalize I would say that it would be a good idea to try and you know do at least five hours of exercise in the week really with that little exercise one can look that hot <laughs> well I see I, I'm, I'm breaking it up like five days a week so there's seven days in the week I'm saying five days of the week go to the gym and an hour is a good time in the gym an hour, 15 minutes is great, but an hour is, is a good time in the gym if you utilize it well. If you're, if you're going to be meandering around the gym and just looking kind of left and right like you sometimes see people do, then not, then maybe not. But if you use that time wisely, and there's so many, there's so much fitness information available nowadays. Sure. There's so many apps. There's so many good apps. Which There's ones so do you uh, Which ones do you recommend? Well, I don't. I don't personally use them because I've got the best walking, Gina. talking live app in front of me. So that's like a that's an interactive app. You know, we sit down in the morning and we're like, what do we feel like doing? We feel like doing Pilates. What do we feel like doing? We feel like doing um, motor. You know, what do we feel like doing? We feel like doing Fletcher Pilates. So I mean, it's an incredible it's an incredible partnership to have. I like jogging as well. So sometimes we do a walk run for four, 45 minutes, which is great interval training. Okay. Uh, Diet-wise, what do you recommend? For diet-wise, it's very simple. Avoid refined sugar. It's not good for your body. We all know that. Um, avoid dairy, because I think it can be a little bit inflammatory. And um, avoid gluten. Okay. And gluten, there's so many great options. Like, you know, bajra doesn't contain, contain gluten. So it's not that you have to give up your favorite things. Just look for the healthy alternative. That's what my mom taught me. Look for the healthy alternative. It's, it's always there. Okay. Talking about your mom, what advice do you have for all the young parents out there? Because uh, in your interviews, you keep talking about yourself and your multiple siblings <laughs> and yeah. how successful they are. So clearly, yeah. your mom did I'm something right. So taking mm. you from her, what parenting advice would you give? Well, she made us independent. I, I wouldn't call it parenting advice because I'm not a parent and I, I don't think, I don't know, I feel that nobody should tell a parent how to be. I mean, that's such a personal thing. But specifically in regards to my mom and my family, she taught us to be independent and she allowed us to think for ourselves and not enforce her beliefs and viewpoints onto us. And she just tried to instill, there's very few things my mom tried to instill and tried to always kind of fight for in a way with us you know when i say fight for i mean always force us to kind of or encourage us to think is a better way uh, encourage us to use these as barometers of of behavior or as guidelines in our life and that is um that is really being not judgmental um having a lot of faith and a lot of belief in 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 the goodness of the world the goodness of prayer the goodness of god the goodness of people and a lot of positivity and I mean touch wood I've 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 seen my mom for however much I've seen her and I think in my life I've seen her look sad like I can count it on one hand 
because she always has a smile and she always is warm to people. She's like, you know, it's, it's such a good example. Like if you, so some people, they, they, when they meet my mom, they're like, that's your mom? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, what happened to you? And I was like, oh, okay, well, I try. But she's just got the biggest smile perpetually on her face and is so warm and open to everyone, you know? And I think that's, it's a, it's a lovely way to be in life, you know? You won't hear her passing a comment on you when you've left or passing a comment on her when she's left. And everyone's nice and everyone's doing a good job and everyone, most of the time, is trying their best. Now, uh, you've had a wonderful journey in Bollywood. Uh, there's so many aspirants. What advice do you have for them? Work hard. It's hard work. Focus on your craft um, and um, just try and be good at what you do. Is there some amount of luck involved or you think it's all hard? I think that, I think that there is definitely something called destiny in life. Um, however you define destiny, um, that's different. It has different definitions for different people. Um, but I think that destiny does, does definitely have a little bit of a role in life. But then beyond that, def definitely you can help your destiny by being clear about what you want and what you want to achieve and, and really working hard and focusing. Talking about destiny, what's your lucky charm, if you have any? My lucky charm is just being clear about what you want to achieve and focusing all your energies in that direction. Okay. Uh, now, you all, uh, all Bollywood stars have such a busy life. Uh, you know, you, uh, when you walk out, you have paparazzi, uh, you, you're or you have to work really hard for a role, or you have to practice for a dance, or you have to work out and be fit. So, uh, when, how do you de-stress? What is the art of de-stressing? Oh. You know, that's and that, what do you do yeah. when you switch off? It's important to do that because a lot of times you don't realize you're, you're not doing that. Your days, yes, you're technically sleeping, but your days are kind of just ending with so much hecticness. And as soon as you wake up, starting with so much hecticness. So that, that time of really, really switching off for me, I would say doesn't happen quite enough. Like I think the last time that really happened was when I went on holiday for my birthday with my sisters, all my sisters. We went to Tulum, which is an incredible place in Mexico. and. It was so much fun. But that's like, what, once once in a year? So I think it is important to try and, and get that balance of a little bit of complete downtime, switching off from everything, disconnecting. Um, but that's not something I do very well. I need to learn how to do that a little more. OK. Uh, going ahead, where do you see uh, Brand K? And uh, do you see yourself opening other businesses? Um, other businesses? Maybe. Um, Anything you're passionate about? Anything else apart from beauty? I mean, sec. Um, fitness is something which is of you know interest to me. Um, there are a few other things that that um, that are in, of interest to me as well. But right now with K Beauty, I think I'm extremely passionate about it. It's something which is which is a genuine. Um, it's it's a genuine interest of mine, and I really want to want to try and grow and create this community of K with within K Beauty and with Nika um, as much as we can. We have an amazing partnership together, and I think we're equally passionate about what we want to say and what we want to do with K Beauty. And um, I think we're just excited about it, how it grows from here, and um, let's see. Okay. On that note, thank you so much. And thank it was you. Wonderful talking to you. Lovely talking to you. Thank you.